welcome back to the workshop. I hope everybody is uh, doing well and staying safe out there. At least the sun is shining and uh, it's kind of summertime now, so at least that's something we can be happy about. Now, this is part three of this leg voice build. So if this is your first time coming and seeing this thing, make sure you go back and watch part one and two, otherwise this is not gonna make any sense whatsoever. So there is part one and two to this, so just let you know. Now, I've changed the mechanism again on this. I've made it even easier to use, simpler range of motion. Everything can be operated from the front, just using the cam lock itself. And if we need to use more clamping force, we can add a bar to the back if we need to. So I'll take you through it. I'm not gonna do any building in this one because it's the same processes that were used in part one and part two so it'll only be boring you guys to date so we just have a look at the mechanism discuss the pros and cons of it and uh, yeah i think this is probably the best iteration of this leg voice so far so let's go through it okay just to give you guys some idea of how this mechanism is now working we have a cam lock which you've seen in the first two videos but now we've kind of added a second mechanism that works exactly like most woodworking clamps bar clamps that you would see parallel jaw clamps all them kind of ones if you keep this part nice and straight it's able to move up and down the bar but as soon as you tilt it it locks on that bar allowing you to drive this screw against this part which gives us a wedging action so i've taken advantage of this principle now with the leg voice itself in tandem with the cam lock to give us our force instead of using a screw and that's how it now works. Now there is a certain amount of slip built into this so we don't have the same clamping force that we had in the last two videos but if we need to get that extremely strong clamping force I've added pile or some holes in the back of the tenon bar that we can put a bar in if you really need that clamping force. I haven't needed it yet but it's there if you want it. Well, we should also point out 99% of you guys got the purpose of this. A few people didn't. So I'll just go through again what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to build a fully functioning leg voice with powerful clamping force that's made completely from timber that anybody in their home workshop can build. So hobbyists, enthusiasts, or actual professional woodworkers could take a weekend or a Saturday and build this thing and it's extremely cheap and functional. That's the point. It is not designed to replace uh, screw type leg voices or to compete with them or anything like that. It's just for um, anybody who wants to build themselves a leg voice for the price of a sheet of plywood. That's what we're trying to achieve here. So just if you can keep that in mind, uh, we get through this. And the rest of you guys who commented on the video, there are some brilliant people out there. There are some great engineer minds. Just made me realize that there's guys watching this video that are far smarter than I am. But uh, yeah, some of your tips and advice and some of your ideas were just fantastic. So uh, keep them coming and we'll keep making this thing better. But yeah, let's go have a look at the mechanism now and uh, we'll see, it's simple enough. Okay guys, here's a quick look at what we've done to the voice now and no laughing at the shorts. It's unbelievably hot in here and these are cool shorts, so we'll have none of it. Now, we've added a second tenon bar and an extra pivot point, so again, just if you haven't watched the first two videos, go back and watch it, otherwise this is not gonna make any sense to you. For everybody who has watched it, you'll be up to speed, you know what I'm talking about. So we have a second tenon bar and a second pivot point here. So I've just mortised this into the bottom of our leg here, and that's able to pivot on that point the same way as we can pivot on this point here. Both this tenon bar, these two tenon arms then are fixed together. So this one is slightly forward, so now our floor wedge is gone. We don't need to use it anymore because this is acting as our floor wedge now and it moves in tandem with our top tenon arm, always keeping the leg voice at the correct angle to ensure that we have good clamping force. So that was one um, addition we've made to this. Next, I've done the offset hole drilling here just in case we wanted to add a bar. It's not actually necessary, there's plenty of clamping force. I've been planing stuff on this and I haven't had an issue yet, but just in case we hit something with really narrowly grain or knots in it and we really need to clamp that piece down, we can add a bar and just get that super clamping force. So that's what we've added so far. Um, so now, how it works, like I explained to you already, was with this clamp, when you tilt this bar, it locks. So essentially this part here now, this part that moves up and down is now your leg voice. The screw is replaced with the cam. This part here is the leg voice. So because this is further or is, is pushed out, this now locks onto this top tenon arm at that angle. When we push it all together, we can clamp and it wedges against the fence. And because I have the two tenon arms locked together, this can't pull out. This, so it stops this one from pulling out. There's a certain amount of slip in it, so we've lost some of that clamping force, but that's the principle behind it. Now, I'll give you a look at the other side and it'll start to make more sense, just in case I've done a bad job of explaining this. 
Okay guys, this is the underneath of our bench then and if you remember before we had our long tenon arm in place and we had some guide rails and stuff but we didn't have these holes in for uh, pins if we wanted to put them in so we've drilled a bunch of offset holes so now you have a great range of motion, drill your holes in an offset pattern and you'll always find the right hole at the right measurement. It's not necessary to use them, but I'll show you now in a minute if we really want to clamp something to weld it to the bench, you can put a bar through one of those holes and that will give us our clamping action. So you can see our bottom tenon arm is in place now. It runs under the bench and then we have two brace pieces at an angle, forward angle, locked against each other. Five screws at the top, three at the bottom. You could put more in if you wanted, but that angle is important so it stops. When you're clamping, it's trying to pull this tenon arm forward. So we need that, we have an offset angle to the back to stop that from happening. So it kind of locks this bar against this one at a back angle so it can't pivot forward, if you see what I'm saying. So that prevents that from happening. So that's what locks our two tenon arms together and that's what gives us our clamping force. Now, I've also um, forced this tenon bar up into the leg and forced this one down into the floor and then screwed it. So as we're pulling out, we're also getting a wedging action this way and uh, like I say, the front of the, of the device works the same way as that clamp that I just showed you. So all that working together is what's giving us our clamping force now. But there is a certain amount of slip in this. So like I say, it's not clamping the same way it does with a pin or the same way we did with our sawtooth locking mechanism. But yeah, this little clamp's pretty good. I'll show you, I'll give you a demonstration of it now. I'll, I'll do some planing there and uh, you can see how well it locks up without any power in place. So that's the simple principle of what we're trying to achieve now. Hopefully you guys understand what's happening here. And like I say, any questions, just leave them below and I'll get back to you. But uh, yeah, that's what the underside of our system looks like now. Again, no metal parts, just boards screwed together. And uh, it's a very simple design. So it's working, that's the main thing. Okay, hopefully I have the entire mechanism in the shot here and you can see what's going on as I use it. So if I lift up this and take the clamping force off, pull our arm forward, that frees up the device so we can now pull it in and out, nice and simple. So that gives us a full range of motion that we can lock at any point we want. Because as this goes forward, it locks onto this bar. The two bars are locked together and that gives me a wedging action for my cam to push against, which gives me a little range of motion pushing into the bench, which gives me just enough biting force to clamp something. So that's how it, the principle and that's how it's working. And like I say, if you want more clamping force, I've just drilled 20 mil holes of the piece of 20 mil steel conduit here. You can make a pin out of timber, whatever you want. Pop that guy in there. And now you have serious clamping force. I haven't needed it yet, so I haven't used it. But uh, yeah, so give you a little demonstration of it in action. You can pull that guy back, slide in, drop in our piece. Now I've just put two sponges in here just for gripping force. Like I say, because of this lockdown, I can't get leather and I can't get cork. So uh, yeah, I have two sponges in there. And you can see there's a bit of slip, so I will pull out slightly until that locks in place. Now I have clamping force. It's not as powerful as our sawtooth, but we have the bar if we need it. Our piece is in the voice. And I can plane and work away there, and that is clamped. It's not moving, it's not budging, and it's wedged to our table, which gives us that super stable piece, which is the beauty of a leg voice. You are clamping to your table. So uh, that's how it's, you know, that's how they work. So that's why they're so good. Now, if, like I say, if we wanted to extend this out then, just pull that guy back out, slide it forward, and we can clamp it this way, push it in against it. Let's keep our piece square on our voice. There we go. And now I can lock that in against that. And that's in there, good and solid. So you can see how quick it is to use now. Just lift the handle, pull in, push in to any distance you want and lock it in place and you have plenty of clamping force. And should you need it, put a bar through there and you can clamp against the bar. So I'll show you that now. Okay, just run through that again. I'll show you without the bar and with the bar. So pop it up, tilt that guy forward. We can pull it out and we can put this piece in place, keep it square, lock it in. Now you'll see the, the amount of slip that we have until the cam gets down. So we're losing that. Then it begins to wedge. Now we're biting, we have pressure and now that piece is locked in place and it's good and solid. It's enough clamping force like this. So um, the bar is not technically needed, but 
if we did feel like we needed the bar, again, that's not a problem. Pull this out, push it into our right distance. So roughly, I'd say about there. You can let that, just by resting the arm at a horizontal position, it's giving me force here, so it holds your piece for you nice and easy. So we can drop our bar into the, the most suitable hole, which is this guy here. And now, you can see that's locked against our leg. Now we have serious clamping force. It's so much force that I can't even go down, so let's go out to our next hole. as that bites against the bar. Now that is welded in there. <laughs> that is a, yeah, you'll never need that much clamping force. If you put that much clamping force into a piece, you could risk bending it or snapping it. So you can see how much force we can generate now. That is a serious amount of force. So yeah, there we go. It's even buckling the bench. There's so much pressure in it. All right guys, I should just explain this part to you. So this is the new part that we've added. Um, so again, I've just notched this piece out. So we essentially have a mortise here and this is 10 and true. We have a gap top and bottom. That's important because this needs to pivot. So again, I have a Sapili pin put in here, the same as what we put in for the cam. And that allows just that little range of motion. That's all we need. So that works the same way as our clamp. As soon as we go off center, it wedges the leg voice against the top tenon. So it can't move forward. And that gives us our wedging action with the two tenons tied together. So. That's, the, that's just a close-up of the new piece, so it makes sense to you guys. Maybe I didn't do a good job explaining it. Pivot point there. Um, mortise your bottom tenon into this. Again, notch it there, gap top and bottom, which allows it just that little range of motion. That's all is required to lock your leg voice against your top tenon. Okay, hopefully that makes it all simple. Right, just to give you one quick look at it again, you can grab the handle, pull the leg, and just pull it on out and that gets us out past so we're out to a foot there now with 12 inches of clamping uh, space <laughs> you're never going to clamp anything more than that if anything more than that that needs to be clamped to the top of your bench to work on for hard to be stable so we have a huge range of motion you could build it you can go out as far as you want the principle is the same although you will start to lose some force you'll have more flex you know you want to make thick or tenon arms if you want to go further but why there's no reason in the wide earthly world you'd want to go up more than that but as you can see now, guys, it is as it's quicker than a screw voice. We have great clamping force. It's quicker than any quick release voice, any screw voice, and uh, we can clamp anywhere along the line. All the operation is worked with the cam from the front of the bench, so there's no reaching under the bench now. We can do everything from here nice and simply. And if we want to weld something to the bench, if you really want to hold that piece in there, you can add the bar if you feel it's necessary. So there you go. That is simple and easy to use. I think this is the best version we have yet. Now we have three options. So we have this option, we have the sing single pin option, we have the sawtooth mechanism option, but for my money, this is by far and away the best version, the easiest to use, the most functional. And I think now, you know, for the money, for a place with sheet of plywood, this is going to compete with the screw voice. There we go. Right guys, there we go. I think that is the best version yet of this leg voice. Now I know I said in the last video that I was gonna use it for a while, but it was just bothering me that little bit, that sawtooth action. Um, it just required a little bit more work than I thought was necessary. So I wanted to go back at it again, have a think about it and come up with a better solution. And this is the best solution I've had yet. Um, it's quick, easy to use, and um, that's the most important thing. In order for us, for people to build this and use it themselves, it has to be quick and simple to use. So I think we've definitely achieved that. All our operations now can be done from the front. It's just a case of catch it, pull it, push it, lock it. Perfect. So we have all the clamping force in the world as well. So it's plenty with the cam on its own, but if you really feel like if something began to slip, you can stick that bar in there and really weld it in, and you can see the force that you can generate with that big lever. It actually buckles the entire bench when you put all that force into it, so that's not needed. That's not required in a woodworking bench or voice, but you have it if you need it. So uh, yeah, there we go. And just to reiterate again, what did we set out to do? This was the point of this, was to build a leg voice completely from timber that anybody could build in their workshop. 
again, I wasn't trying to take on the screw voice guys out there. I was trying to build a leg voice that you guys could build at home for cheap with hand tools or any tools that you have to hand that uh, any woodworker, or hobbyist, enthusiast, professional out there could build this in a day or two days and have themselves a leg voice for the price of a sheet of plywood. That was the purpose. And I think we've knocked it out of the park on this one. Thanks to you guys and some of your solutions out there, your responses to the videos, the last two videos have been amazing. There are some brilliant minded people out there and it's great to be able to connect with everybody through these YouTube videos and uh, use the hive mind as they say. So thanks very much. You guys definitely contributed to this. So yeah, there we go. Now hopefully between the first, second and this third video, you guys have enough information now to go and build this for yourselves. So I think this will be my last video on this leg voice for a while now, unless I come up with another eureka idea, but I don't think so. I think this will be it for a while. You guys are probably sick of listening to it as well. So we we'll leave it at that. It's working perfectly now. So now it's the time to put this to use. You'll see me using this in all my woodworking videos coming up. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Hopefully you guys will go build your own one now. You can now build a leg voice for the price of a sheet of three quarter birch ploy, which is in around 60 quid. So. There you go, knock yourselves out. Now, it's unbelievably hot in here, so I'm gonna get out of here. I'll talk to you in the next one.